David mentions Joe Biden with Lester Holt last night and the answer where he kind of got all over Lester and tried to dodge on his own debate performance and instead turn it around on the media for not making that debate about Trump. Here's that soundbite. Watch. Yeah. In your last TV interview, you were asked if you had watched the debate. Your answer was, I don't think so. No. Have you since seen it? I've seen pieces of it. I've not watched the whole debate. Are you seeing what they saw? which was moments of, frankly, of, that appeared to be, you appeared to be confused. Lester, look, why don't you guys ever talk about the 18, the 28 lies he told? Where, where are you on this? Why didn't the press ever talk about that? But I, it, I, I, I just asked a question because the, the, the idea that you may or may not have seen what some of these other folks have seen, you're not on the same- I'd have to see, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I had to see it. I was there. And by the way, seriously, you won't answer the question, but why didn't the press talk about all the lies he told? Well, I haven't heard have, anything about that. We have, we have reported many of the issues that no, came up in haven't. that debate. No, you haven't. We'll provide you with them. God, God love you. Okay. Here's part of the problem with that, Hogan, as I see it. Not only is it obviously a dodge, but you can't attack Lester Holt because Lester Holt is not a hateable figure. He's a sweet guy. You know, trust me, even I had a very negative experience at NBC, but now with that guy, he was actually very sweet to me the whole time. Like, you can't make a villain out of him. That's not going to be an option for you when you're on the ropes like Joe Biden was there. And he says, you know, I don't have to watch it. I was in it. The question that was asked was, did you watch it? That's what Stephanopoulos asked him. And he said I, he, he wasn't sure. So it's now he's landed on. I didn't have to watch it. I was there. But yeah, the, you couldn't even remember days after whether you'd seen it. Anyway, what did you make of it? Well, so many things wrong with that, obviously. Uh, listen, to watch someone of the left like Joe Biden complain about the media is so rich on its face. The left has been coddled by the mainstream media, the press, the legacy media, whatever you want to call them especially Joe Biden. I mean, the guy's been in office for half of a century. They've been carrying his water that entire time. They've been covering up for his mistakes, his problems, his bad policies for the last four years. And that problem on the debate stage was now the veneer was off. The American people saw it with their own eyes and the press kind of had to pretend as though they didn't know anything about it. And, and, and that this is all new information for them when it obviously wasn't. And so to watch Joe Biden attack someone like Lester Holt. And you said, yes, he's a very likable figure. I was with him this week. A, a, a more sweet man there is not on this planet. And, and, and Joe Biden couldn't say, hey, I called those things out on stage because he didn't. The issue mm -hmm. in that debate was the way Joe Biden looked, the way he responded, the slack jaw, the staring off into the distance. That has long been his problem, but it was on the on the main stage for all the world to see. And you talked about falling off that presidential stage. Yes, no lights burn hotter, no stage is bigger than that of the presidential. And in all deference to my good friend, Rick Perry, you can oops yourself off that stage in a hurry. There's a mm -hmm. long way to go though between now and the election. David's absolutely right. A lot is going to change. There will be ebbs and flows, of course, but moments like this for Joe Biden do not help him. Yes, he had some flubs in here. Yes, he had some mistakes. We know he's frail. We know he's feeble. We know he's fragile. That to me is not really the issue because while the American people see that, they're more concerned about how his policies have impacted their lives and how their own economies are bad because of him. And when he goes up on a, on a friendly like George Stephanopoulos or like Lester Holt and botches that simple task, 93% of the news coverage on Donald Trump by every available measure uh, and every uh, uh, available data point was negative, 93%. And this guy has one bad cycle and he's complaining about it. I just find that yeah. to be so rich. That and, he and one totally more thing, brought upon himself. That, that, you know, that yes, was not a media generated controversy. Yes, it, it's, it's his fault. And I'll say this because as we look at this convention and I'm here and people are walking by. So if you hear something, I'm sorry, they're just loud and they're excited. But <laughs> watching Republicans try to expand and grow this tent is fascinating because we're in July. Joe Biden is still trying to shore up his base He's still going to black churches and trying to say, hey, remember me, I'm Joe Biden. It's July. People will start voting in a few months. And so when he has opportunities to try and turn the narrative, when he has an opportunity to try and say, no, I promise I'm a steady hand. I can make this country better. I can make your life better. He doesn't do it. He complains. And it is a serious issue, not just for Joe Biden, but for the Democrats writ large. 
80 days. That is the phrase I'm going to be taking away with me today. 80 days. It's such a short window to turn an aircraft carrier around if we believe that you know, I'm mildly interested in these national polls, but I'm much more interested in the likely voters in the battleground states, which have yes. been consistently strong for President Trump. And I have yet to see that changing, especially in the blue wall states um, in, you know, uh, Michigan and Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota, that whole region there. And then Pennsylvania, where, you know, J.D. Vance is from, that's basically his territory. Ohio's right next to Pennsylvania. That's where he grew up. And uh, that's another play that's gonna work well there, that white working class in those states. I think they're gonna respond well to JD. And I know the media is jumping all over him about, oh, you know, you didn't like Trump. You said terrible things about Trump, which he did for sure. He did not like Trump. But his life story, I think, is a big part of why he was chosen. It's absolutely inspirational. I think all those people, once they hear that, are gonna be very moved, as I was, by JD Vance. He's he's a, an inspirational figure. Now the media, let's see if they let that through. But I want to stay on, on, on Joe Biden for a minute. So here's the thing. There's a bit of a quandary right now for the Democrats, David, because, forgive me for putting it this way, but the, because of the assassination attempt. Because they want to continue slugging Donald Trump as hard as humanly possible. But it's a little hard because the nation's sympathies are with him. At the moment, we all saw what happened on Saturday. I think most humans were inspired by the way he handled it. And then you had Joe Biden come out in the White House and say, we've got to lower the temperature, lower the temperature. So, but then he goes on with Lester and it didn't seem like a lowering of the temperature moment. He brought up a lot of tropes about Donald Trump that have been debunked. So you tell me what they're supposed to do with this. Let's, let's watch um, a little bit of that. There's, there's no place at all for violence in politics in America. None. Zero. For example, you know, the January 6th, uh, you know, the attack on the Capitol. I watched what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia. He said they're very fine people on both sides. But have, have you s taken a step back and done a little soul searching on things that you may have said that could incite uh, people who are not balanced. My, my, my opponent is engaged in that rhetoric. He talks about to be a bloodbath if he loses, suspend the sentences of all those who were arrested and sentenced to go to jail because of what happened in the Capitol. This doesn't sound like you're, you're, you're turning down the heat, though. You've, you've talked oh, about no, the No, 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 no. Look, when I'm turning down, we have to stop the whole notion that there are certain things that are contrary to our our democracy that we're for. So, so what what will, can you and what will you do? At, at least things you can control to lower down the temperature, the rhetoric out there. Continue to talk about the things that matter to the American public. It matters whether or not you accept the outcome of elections. It matters whether or not you, for example, talk about how you're going to deal with the border instead of talking about people as being vermin and all. I mean, those things matter. That's the kind of language that is inflammatory. So, I mean, just for the record, the fine people thing has been debunked over and over and over, including by left wing fact checkers. That's not what Trump said. The bloodbath thing was a comment made by Trump in the economic context where he was talking about how China wants to take advantage of us by building plants in Mexico and hurting American workers. And that if they if they think they're going to get away with that, they're not. And if he's voted in, it'll be a bloodbath for the economy. He was obviously talking about the automobile industry and, and the tariffs that he was going to bring and Biden wouldn't. But he continues to misuse those things. I don't know that the average American knows that. Do you owe back taxes? Pandemic relief is now over. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay-up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. Don't waive your rights and speak with them on your own. That's scary. It usually doesn't end well. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients, and they can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe 10000 bucks or $10 million, they can help you. Whether it's business or personal taxes, even if you have the means to pay, or if you don't, if you're on a fixed income, they can help finally resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Call 1-800-245-6000 for a private, free consultation, or visit tnusa.com slash Megan.
Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.